Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's take a look at the new iPhoto for iOS. So the iPhoto app you get in the App Store and it costs $5 currently. Uh, once you get it and you run it, you have the access to all of the photos, the stuff in your camera roll, as well as any albums you've loaded on. So it appears to have everything that you get using the default Photos app. iPhoto doesn't replace the Photos app. That's still there. It still works the same way. This is just an additional app. So let's turn the iPad horizontal for a better look. And let's go in and select a photo, go into one of my albums here, and select this skyline photo here. Now, I've got the edit button in the upper right hand corner selected, so all the controls at the bottom are for editing. I could turn that off, and I'm just viewing the photo. I'll turn it back on again, and we can go and browse through the editing tools. So to move through them quickly, you've got your cropping tool here, which allows you not only to crop the photo, but also to rotate it using the spinner here at the bottom. There's an undo button here at the top and we can use that to undo all of our changes. Now we can go to the second tool here. Now when you want to know the names of any of these tools, press the question mark button at the top of the screen. and This gives you all of this information about everything you see on the screen here. So, for instance, we can see this is the exposure tool here. And when we select it, we can see all the different things we can do with the Exposure Tool. And here I can drag the Brightness Control and adjust individual contrast here at the bottom. Highlights and Shadows. So it gives you a really good visual interface here at the bottom. We can undo all of this. Now, we go here to the Color Tool and we have various tools here at the bottom that we can adjust as well. So there's tons of stuff you can play with and including white balance here which allows you to change the white balance for all sorts of different things. We can look at these adjustment tools here and you can see there's a whole bunch of different ones and we can select one and then paint with it. So for instance if we wanted to uh, desaturate some things here we select that tool and you can see select at the bottom. and I can rub my finger over, I'm rubbing over the bottom part of the screen here um, and you can see it gradually desaturating the grass at the bottom of the screen, removing a lot of the green. And as I continue to rub back and forth with my fingertip I can see that I've desaturated the bottom there. And you can see it dramatically here when I undo the change and you can see I've taken away that desaturation. And then you also have a variety of effects here that we can select and it comes out in this little uh, cool interface and I can select say vintage here and then they're all at the bottom and I can see uh, which one I want to use so I can select the 60s look or go to saturated film early chrome all sorts of neat things and I can add a vignette so it kind of changes what area is affected and of course at the bottom you've got an auto enhance button there which will apply a variety of effects depending upon what it thinks the photo needs. Uh, you can rotate it, uh, you can flag uh, or mark as a favorite uh, any photo. Um, and, uh, and then we could also uh, zoom in and out on a photo as you would expect normally. And I could use the buttons at the bottom here to go to the next photo, the previous photo, and go through them all. Now I could also use the settings here to do things like set something as a key photo for an album. Um, I can copy and paste uh, effects from one photo to another, but I can also select multiple. So now it allows me to go on to the left here and select four things, say, and now that I've selected them, hit done at the top, and now you can see I've got all four photos selected at the same time, and I can do some things to them, like mark them all as a favorite or uh, flag them. Now you can use the I button at the upper right to get info on the photos, uh, even uh, add comments and you can do that for Facebook and Flickr separately and I can look here at all the different things here. If this photo had geolocation information it would also be displayed here. Now if I go back to albums I'll see that in addition to the camera roll and all the albums that I've synced from my computer I can view uh, all the photos, I can view uh, events, 
if I have synced any events from my Mac, which I haven't, I can also, uh, when I go back to albums here, see that I've got a folder of edited photos. So it's going to remember that I've edited some and save them here uh, in this special album that I'll see in iPhoto so I can come back to them and continue working with the photos. Also I should point out that it looks a little different if you play with it on the iPhone. So here on the iPhone you can see I've got a slightly different interface with buttons at the bottom. Uh, I can select an album here and you can see there's just not enough room to display a lot of different things. So I can bring up that same photo, uh, edit it, and I've got the same basic features here as far as I could tell but it's just a little harder to see them all at once. So for instance I can bring up these effects here, the same ones, and I can apply them. And I can undo and I've got all the same features. They're just slightly different about uh, where they appear. So Now there are a ton of sharing options. You see there I could go back to my camera roll, so in other words save a copy with my edits in it. I could share it via iTunes, the, the document sharing feature when you sync. I can email something. I can beam a edited photo between two iOS devices both running iPhoto. You just use that beam feature there and then the other one running iPhoto will appear and I can then send the photo to it over the Wi-Fi network. I can AirPrint and I can go to services like Twitter, Flickr, and Facebook and I can create a slideshow. Also you'll notice the first one is the journal feature. Well, we'll take a look at the journals feature in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the videos link at the top of the page, and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.